Well, hello, TRM partners. Pastor Philip here with another weekly word just for you. Mama Alberta sends her love. She's not with me today. And uh, as you can see, I'm uh, suited up. Uh, just got done talking to pastors in Pakistan and uh, ministering to them. And it's just a joy uh, to see uh, pastors that are uh, hungry for instruction and in how to minister the Word of God effectively. And partners, you are making that happen. So thankful uh, for each and every one of you, uh, your prayers and your financial support and your just your encouragement and just the love you give to me and Mama Alberta. It's just we 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 not only sense it, we feel it and know it. And so uh, thank you. Uh, got a weekly word for you. And this word comes from uh, a time of frustration in my life. Years ago, it looked like uh, nothing was happening. Like nothing uh, that Alberta and I were believing God for was uh, coming into uh, manifestation. Oh yeah, we were seeing God's hand do this and do that and, and so on and so forth. But we were looking for that big breakout moment. And, uh, you know, I'm, I was fasting, I was praying, I was, uh, you know, uh, doing what I knew to do. And uh, on a, in a moment of frustration one day, I just really cried out to the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> I said, God, you got to talk to me. Have you ever been in that place where you're just like, God, you got to talk to me? And, uh, you know, I'm sitting there waiting for him to talk to me and I'm not hearing nothing. Now, you're you're uh, listening to somebody that hears the voice of God a lot. And uh, I, I love I love hearing God speak. I love it when I hear that still small voice and that prompting and that and that uh, uh, when he and, and or when he established my thoughts in a particular thing, and I know it was outside my realm of thinking, you know, and so on and so forth. It's a wonderful thing. That's that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But years ago, uh, you know, I'm getting mad. You, you got to talk to me. You got me. Here's where I was at. You got me into this mess. <laughs> you know, we'd already, <coughs> excuse me, sold the farm and and left everything we had and given everything away. And I'm kind of like, you know, throwing it at God. You got me in this mess. Now, I have the right for you to talk to me. Now, you talk to me, and you talk to me now. And you know what I heard? Absolutely nothing. And so, you know, I went and out of that prayer time, if you, if that's what that was, and it was because God can handle it. And I went and got my Bible, you know, just kind of like that, and it opened up to Isaiah 34 and verse 16. And it just, it was God speaking straight to me. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Now, I just, I just went off on God to hear from God. And I just opened up my Bible. Now, you know, you can't just, okay, God, I don't, you know, talk to me. You just can't do that. But there's times when it's just supernatural. Maybe you've had that happen where uh, you are asking God about something or whatever, and you open up your Bible, and boom, right there it was. Well, this, this just, I mean, it pinned me back. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So what God was telling me was, won't you quit running off with your mouth and get in the book and read? Well, I did it. I did it. I told Alberta what just had happened. And I'm going to read, read, read. And I made myself read. 
I mean, I'd read whole books of the Bible. I would read uh, m many chapters at a time. And I just started. Now, see, when I first got born again, that was effortless. I was so hungry for God, I didn't even know how many hours I was spending in the Word. Time was just flying by. But this, I'm not in that place now. And so I'm making myself read. Now, see, this is where people uh, can think you're into works, into legalism. No, God, I'm under instruction. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And you know what? Listen up, partners. I did that. And guess what I discovered? Answers. Direction. I knew what uh, Mama Alberta and myself were supposed to do. Now, look over here in uh, Proverbs. Going the wrong way. Proverbs chapter 2. Going the wrong way in the Bible. Proverbs back this way. I ain't going the wrong way. I'm in the right way. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 2. And we're talking about uh, seek ye out of the book and read. This book, I just told a, a bunch of pastors in Pakistan, is not like any other book. But when the Lord says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, there's something he wants you to see in this that you're not aware of or you need to be reminded of. See? And in Proverbs chapter 2, it says in verse 1, my son or my daughter, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. Now watch this. If you seek her as silver, seek her as silver or as treasure, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shall you understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. It goes all the way back to the simplicity of seek and ye shall find. Now, what happens in our Christian walk? Listen to me. What happens? is that word time can get almost in a uh, regiment of routine to where you do your reading. But while you're reading, you're not really seeking. You're just getting your reading done. Don't ask me how I know. And so you're reading the Word of God, but you're not seeking while you're reading, God did. God said, "Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read." He didn't say, "Read ye out the book of the Lord and seek." No, we're diving into the Word of God. We're seeking God out of His Word, and to do that, we must read. Does that make sense? See. And so, uh, you know, as a pastor, I just can't uh, read the Word of God for messages. Then, uh, like the apostle, I think it's Apostle Paul said, I preach to everyone else, but I lose out with God myself. Why? Because what I'm preaching is good stuff, but it's not uh, my daily bread. See, it's not what God is speaking to me. There are, there are uh, see, that's why you got to, as, as ministers of the gospel, you can't preach what you're being uh, convicted of. You know, I've heard preachers say, well, you know, 
God's dealing with me on this, and I know he's dealing with you on this if he's dealing with me. Well, that, that could be. That could be. But don't take what God's doing in you personally as if that's happening to everyone else. But see, as a pastor, I got to get a word for everyone else, myself included, but everyone else. But I can't take that study of God's word for sermon preparation as my personal time of seeking the Lord. See? And so we got to be very careful that we're just not reading our 15 minutes or a half hour or hour or whatever it may be and you're just reading the Word of God. Now, that's better not reading, but we need to be seeking the Lord while we're reading. God, you're going to talk to me. And see, that's what happened to me that day. God, you're going to talk to me. You got me in this mess. You got to get me out of this mess. Now, what, what are you saying? And it, not hearing nothing. And then when I opened up the Bible, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. I heard God as if he was just sitting right beside me saying, Philip, now you just need to seek seek out of the book of the Lord and read and you're going to find your answers right there. That's what I did. And that's what God did. And the next thing I knew, I know what to do. I know what to do. See? And, uh, you know... <clears throat> One time in our life, uh, the Lord had spoken to me and said, in four months, you and Alberta will be uh, actively in ministry, particularly uh, at that time we were going to the mission field in four months. I know the Lord said that. Uh, he gave me that verse, say not, there's yet four months and then cometh the harvest. And Alberta and I were counting down the days, counting the, down the days, told everybody we're leaving, four months. God already told us. You know, when that fourth month was over, Alberta looked at me and she said, I know you hear from God, but we ain't gone nowhere. And you better go hear, you better go hear from God and find out why. So I did that. And the Lord said to me, You didn't do nothing. All you did was wait for four months to go by. You didn't pack one box. You didn't get nothing prepared. I said, well, it didn't take us long. And it was just a few weeks later, we were on the mission field. We got everything packed up. We left. We got out of the house we were renting and gave our cars away, gave our, uh, our uh, every, every, everything, gave it all away. Because in our minds we wouldn't we were never coming back. I don't I don't know why we thought that at that time, because that didn't really line up with the vision that the Lord had given me with the band and everything. But we were young and learning. But uh, uh, to find out that you haven't done anything yet, I had to get in this book and read, and I saw where God told people to do things; they had to put action to it. You following this, partners? Now, listen. I know we're word folk. And I know we spend a lot of time in the word. But listen, quality time is better than quantity time. But sometimes it takes quantity time to develop quality time. Did you hear that? All the hours in those early days, I spent quantities of time spent in the Word of God, developed a quality time in my life now. For instance, how much time, how much time did I have in the Word this morning? Now, I've already preached to... Uh, Pakistan pastors before uh, 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 recording this. How much time did I have with the Lord this morning? Now watch this. I prayed from about one o'clock to four o'clock, right? But my but my word time was only about forty five minutes, but it was quality. 
I knew where God said to go. I knew what God said to me, and it strengthened me. It freshened me. See, the quantity time developed the quality time. Boy, I'm, I, I, Eric, write that down. I might have to preach a message right there because that's just coming from heaven right there. That uh, quantity of time uh, develops that quality of time. So you're not wasting time reading the book. You're not wasting time. But we need to add in there, while we're reading, you're seeking. You're seeking for your destiny. You're seeking for how you're supposed to live and conduct yourself. You're seeing how you're supposed to treat others. You're seeing what, what Jesus has provided for uh, you and I. See, you getting this? All right, partners. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every one of our partners. I'm thankful for each and every one of them. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you, you take their time spent with you in the word, Lord God, and you would make it quality time. They would learn how to develop that quality time, that they would seek you out of the word of God by reading your precious word. Now I bless them, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, in the mighty name of Jesus. So be it, amen. Partners, stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Me and Mama Alberta, we love you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And remember, Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse four says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing.